I am a singer, songwriter, and YouTuber named Brad Steele. And this past weekend, I went and saw the Eras Tour live in the movie theater because I could not afford to go to the live thing this summer. But I did go to the movies this past weekend with some friends. In IMAX, we saw the Eras Tour live, so it felt like we were there. It sounded like we were there. It was loud. It was the big screen. It was great. And I am not what you would call a Swifty I don't guess. I like Taylor Swift, but I went into this uh, concert movie thing as kind of an outsider, just somebody who likes Taylor Swift, but I'm not like a devoted fan like um, everybody else there. <laughs> um, and so I went just to kind of see what was going on with this big tour that she had done. And uh, first of all, I want to say, I think it was just such a great show. I mean, three hours that she was doing that every night, and I know there were some songs that were left out, so it was even longer than that uh, in actual the live concerts. Um, unbelievable show, the different sets for each album, the um, effects on the stage, the dancers, everything she did to make each, um, each album, each era unique in and of itself was amazing. Uh, a lot You could tell a lot of hard work went into that, and it was just an unbelievable show. But I was thinking as I watched the show and as I thought of, thought back on it over the weekend and today, I was asking myself like I wonder like what is it about Taylor Swift that has garnered such a reaction from so many people because I I was telling my buddy that you know was one of the people that went to the movie with me. I said I think it honestly is the closest thing we have today to what you look back and see about how people were about Elvis and the Beatles and Michael Jackson. I mean, you you've all seen the pictures and videos of people just having a meltdown, right? About like reaching out, crying, screaming, passing out, like all of this stuff because they were such devoted fans. And I told my buddy, I said, I think she's like the closest thing we have to that today because there were people not just crying on the concert. But like in the theater, there were people getting emotional. And I just, I started thinking, I was like, it's so unique to me because it feels like over the last five years, especially, it is really amped up. And I was thinking, what is it about Taylor Swift that has garnered this unbelievable reaction? My own wife is a Swifty herself. So I've heard all the albums, I've heard all the songs. And I think the conclusion I've arrived to, I think there are a, diff a few different elements. Of course, there is a familiarity uh, that a lot of the longtime fans have with her. There's a nostalgic element. The fact that, you know, some of these people were little girls when Taylor Swift first came along and now they're grown and her music has kind of followed them and, and not just followed them. I mean, I mean, she's literally spoken their language. You know, there are so many people in my life who are diehard fans of hers who will say her music literally has always spoken exactly to something I'm going through in my life. When I was a teenager, when I was early 20s, late 20s, now 30s, I'm a grown woman, I got kids, you know, and guys too. I mean, I hear it from guys who are like, hey, I did, her song, this song or that song spoke to me when I was 18, when I was 24, you know, uh, when I was 22, ha <laughs> ha. Um, and, and so I think there, of course, is a familiarity and nostalgic element of people who just feel like they are, they know her. And they and she's been so open about things that have happened in her life. I think there is that element, but also because our fan base has grown, there are new fans who have come along. In my opinion, as someone who writes songs myself, that's what I admire about her the most is her songwriting ability, her ability to just put something in a song that is so poetic that it it reaches through and grabs you. I love the fact that her music forces you to pay attention to those lyrics, especially Folklore, that album, Evermore, and, and now Midnight's. These are albums that, like, the lyrics, you have to pay attention. It's not just about the melody and having a fun beat. There are lyrics in there that are deep that you might have to listen to the song a few times to really pick up on what's going on. I think it is absolutely, th like, that to me is why she has staying power more than anything. Because when you are able to reach through with your lyrics, a great song will live forever. A bunch of great songs, you forget about it. You're you're immortal at that point. And I think like 
She has just had great album after great album after great album, and they're great albums because she's speaking the people's language. She knows her fan base, and she knows how to speak their language, and it is something that I think is so admirable. She is a mastermind. Ha-ha! <laughs> but I think, like, the song Betty, and there are other songs like it, but Betty in particular, is absolutely brilliant to me that she is singing a song from the perspective of a fictional character that she made up. It's like, it's literally like a play or a musical. I mean, it, she is singing a song that's not necessarily from her perspective, but from the perspective of characters that she made up uh, over the course of the album. There's a story being told about different characters. You know what I'm saying? It, it's like, that's something that you're not seeing a lot of. <laughs> I'm not saying it's never been done before. I'm not saying nobody else does anything like it. But, I mean, that is a very cool thing to do. It's a revolutionary thing to do. And it seems like she has such a good finger on the pulse of when it's time to shift and do a different style. Because, I mean, over the course of all the eras, albums that are represented, a lot of it's just different stuff over the course of, of the thing. And so... I just, her mind and, and the way that she comes up with these lyrics that reach through and captivate, that's what I admire the most. And that's why I think she not only has the staying power that she does, but also the ability to just, the whole thing's just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's brought in more fans and more fans and more fans and more fans and more fans, and more fans because I, it, it, it's a great songwriter. Yeah, she's got a lot of other talents that she has, but as a songwriter, her songs and the lyrics in her songs are captivating people and bringing them in. That's what I love to see. There was one point on the Eras tour, I think it was actually the first song of the show, where she was like, okay, everybody, here comes the bridge. And like just something little like that, where it's like a lot of people don't even think about like what the bridge of a song even is. Like, you know, like the fact that you kind of make it a point to always have these great bridges in your songs that people can sing along to. I mean, that's awesome. That's, I mean, the importance of a song. There are songs that we still sing from the 60s, 70s, 80s, even before that, and they've lasted all these years because it's a great song. Lyrically, it is strong. And for a while there in pop music, I feel like we kind of lost sight of how important it was to have great lyrics. And I'm glad that an artist like that, that's so, like, biggest star in the world, has come along to, you know, bring that back. To show the importance of having a great song and paying attention to detail in the lyrics. I think it's awesome. And I enjoyed the concert, thought it was great. Um, loved, you know, having the shots of the fans in there. It felt like I was there. So that was awesome. And that was what I thought about Taylor Swift, the era's tour live in the movie theater thank you guys take it and soak it up bye